All right, what's up, YouTube? It's your boy TKK here. Another week, another PC, man. This is my third pre built this year. It's kind of crazy because last year I did nothing but custom builds or, or my own builds. The year before that, I did nothing but my own builds. But because of the shortage and the crazy experience that you have to have to get a 30 series graphics card, be it 3090, 3080, 3070, 3060, 3060 Ti, all of that, man, pre built is really the way to go. So today, what I'm going to be doing is a quick unboxing and a quick look into this particular MSI Aegis system. We're going to check it out right after this intro. All right, so today what we got here is the MSI Aegis R, not to be confused with the Aegis RS, which is what I reviewed last week on my channel. Check the description. I will link you there if you want to check that one out. Differences between this one and that one. This particular unit is going to feature the same case. It's going to have an RTX 3070. The RS has a 3080. This is going to feature an Intel i7-10700 9K. Okay, so it's not an overclockable processor. The RS does have a 10.7KS uh, uh, processor or KF. So it's overclockable. Um, they both come with the same MSI liquid AIO that's 120 millimeters. This one on the other end um, versus the RS is going to come with the B460 motherboard. So it's a motherboard that does not allow for any overclocking, which the processor is not overclockable. The RS does come with a 490 MSI board, which does allow you to do some overclocking. But they're both going to come with Wi-Fi, keyboard, mouse. Again, the reasoning behind this is going to be to get my hands on a 3070 at an affordable price. And I'm going to be using a Parsis in this to upgrade one of my sons who has been using in Ryzen 5 and some older parts. So we're going to open this up right now. Right. Get this thing cut open. Check it out. See what they did on a cable management and such. All right. All right. Get this thing up out of the box. All right, you can cut. All right, so in my last video with the RS, I did get asked by a subscriber to uh, explain what came inside of this, all right? So I realized that I didn't explain it very well, but what you're gonna get is essentially the same things that you would get if you bought this motherboard. So um, MSI is gonna include this, how to open it. Um, manual right just a quick start guide it's going to come with this mouse right it does have a little bit of rgb in the wheel and right here also on their logo it's going to come with this accessory bag that's going to include power cable okay ac power cable it's going to come with the antenna connectors for the integrated Wi-Fi that's already on the motherboard. You're gonna get two SATA cables. This is the, the question in specific that was asked, did it come with SATA cables? So you're gonna get two SATA cables, um, actually one SATA cable. So literally the motherboards come with two, but um, they use the one uh, from the motherboard to connect the SATA hard drive. So you're gonna get all the little booklets and things of that sort and trickets, um, warranty guide and Again, another how-to that you would get if you purchase a motherboard. And then I want to give you a look at the keyboard, which is going to be membrane with some RGB. Now, they got two variations of this keyboard. I'm not really sure the model numbers, but this is the keyboard you're going to get. So now I'm mechanical. Uh, it is uh, backlit with RGB under the keys. Nothing too fancy. USB 2.0, no USB pass-through, but that's what you get with the accessory pack. All right, so take this thing out of the bag that it comes in. So it's actually a really nice case. At the end of the last video I did with the G, with the RS model, um, I showed you guys that I had used a lot of those parts for my son. And so with this one, I'm going to be doing the same, pretty much gutting this out. Hey, come on. 
walk around. Mm, it's actually clean, black. So the antennas that came are gonna just pop right to those. So this motherboard looks like this particular unit actually has uh, Wi-Fi built onto the motherboard. That was not the case with the the RS model. They actually put in a PCIe card for Wi-Fi. And so down here in the second to last slot, you had that occupied for the Wi-Fi antennas, but it's already integrated to the board there. So it's kind of cool. You get two USB 2.0. You get a PS2 slot, not for PlayStation, but that's for like a traditional keyboard and mouse, um, an HDMI display port. Um, you're gonna get a USB-C, USB-A super speed there. You're gonna get two more USB 3.0s there, 2.5 gig. And then you're gonna get all your audio connectivity options there, as well as your digital optical is gonna be there. And I'm not sure why this little piece is missing off the HDMI, but Maybe they use that to test it, so let's hope that's the case. All right, so I just made a discovery. So I said that this had a liquid AIO, some misleading information. So hopefully this video will help you guys to make a decision on what you wanna do. Um, so taking this off, looks like this has an air cool system. Okay, so it's it's clean. It is clean. I like the contrast with this uh, motherboard. It's an MSI motherboard. The mag being like in this chrome-like finish. But it's an air-cooled system. Kind of reminds me of the uh, Cooler Master 212 Black Edition. Um, so it's got a radiator there with a fan blowing in this direction. You got four RGB fans actually. I'm not sure if this is going to be a uh, RGB or not. looks like it could be, but in a second, I'm going to get this turned on. Um, got an 80 plus bronze power supply there. I think this is 650. I'm not sure we're going to take a look at that though, but this is also from what I can see clearly looking at it and you don't have to get the camera down, but it's a, it's a two fan um, MSI uh, 3070 car. So very small compact car, man. Um, this is the Ventus car. So this is going to, this is gonna replicate the size aesthetic of the 2060. Um, then you got the, the uh, 16 gigs of RAM, but the, the build is clean. I, I really like what MSI does with how they put their builds, their pre-builds together, and I do definitely recommend them. We're gonna take a look at this cable management though now. All right, let's take a look at this back. Let's see what we got here. So again, they use this, <coughs> excuse me, eight data, uh, one terabyte, um, SSD. They do have this set up where it's a C and a D drive. So just so you know, you don't get this all as one drive. They kind of got it broken up um, where you've got like 500 gigs and you've got another 300 and some change gigs. So C and D drive. Um, pretty standard here from what I showed with the build last week. Um, you do got your drive trays. Literally the same case, adapters and all of that. Um, so I'm pretty sure this is probably going to be an RGB fan on the cooler because you've got five connectors into this hub versus the four that was in the the last model so we'll take a look and see what we got there in one second all right first time boot up nice attractive look man Interesting. I like it. I was wrong in the last um, video phase. There are five connectors just like there are on the more premium model, but the fifth connector is the fan versus it being the AIO connector. Um, this should totally be fine for this processor at stock speeds. Um, in performance, it's supposed to be somewhere above the i9 9900k but below the 10700k so with no overclocking going on it should be a fine system now my son does not like he likes this case but he doesn't want this case so this case is going to be just like it's going to sit around and so he's got an older case that i had just brought back to life but 
Um, I'm going to just gut everything that's in here and just put some white Corsair fans in his. But I'm going to leave all these fans and such in here. But I'm going to take the cooler out, the Ram, the motherboard. This card, however, he's not getting that card. <laughs> this card is going to be going in uh, my console style build. So I'm going to take this card out and show it to you guys so you can um, get a look at it. And then we'll have a discussion about, you know, again, why it's so important to get this card um, in a pre-build versus trying to get it itself. All right, so the cooler that's in here is the Vitro V5, all right? That's the name of this cooler that's in here. Um, here's giving you a better look at the motherboard if you were interested what's here. I like the finishes. Like, this has like a rough feel to it. Feels like it's like a metal, if you will, but it's pretty clean. I'm not sure exactly what's in this power supply, but I'm sure it's probably a 650. All right, so the last piece to tell you this is actually a data, 16 gigs of RAM. It is at 3,000 megahertz. But the reason behind buying a pre-built was this. And as I'm checking Amazon, I am seeing these cards go for about $1,300, which is actually ridiculous, okay? Um, this card, the 3070, is designed to compete with the 2080 ti so i replaced the 2080 ti from a build and i'm going to be putting this there now the reason that i wanted that is because of this hdmi port it's 2.1 so gaming on a 4k screen getting beyond uh, 60 frames per second is the reasoning behind this so we got this guy and we got the 3080 um, it's going to be the uh, three fan model both attractive Bigger fans, more fans. Um, as far as the thickness of the cards, kind of like an apples to apples, if you will. This card being much shorter, obviously, because it's a two slot or a two fan card. They're both two slots, so they're not taking up any crazy brackets like the EVGA cards are. Um, and they are both eight pins, so it's another interesting thing. But that's all I got for this video. Um, if you got any questions about this particular pre-built that I did not answer, don't hesitate to uh, ask in the comments and I'll be sure to answer those for you guys. Until next time, Max Love.